going to talk now a little bit about regrooving. Very often in specifications you might have a, uh, an area that's, that they ask you to regroove a shiv. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the code, they have what they call, there's really nothing in the code that specifically tells you when you can and when you cannot regroove a shiv. They have a factor of safety for driving machines. And a lot of what it says, it's based on the ultimate strength of the material. Well, very often, we're at a very big disadvantage in this industry because we don't know what the strength of those materials are. They may have been made 100 years ago. So there's certain assumptions that you have to make. And um, they'll give you factors of safety up here, 8 for steel, 10, 10 for cast iron. Uh, this industry has used very often in some of the older applications of what they call, by today's standards, a class 20 metal which is a 20,000 PSI tensile strength cast iron. Um, but who really knows what, what's strong and what isn't? So what we've come up with, and certainly by today's standards, we use much higher grades of cast iron, and they're stronger. What we've done was make a small diagram, such as this one, to show certain things. And that is that when, uh, when you buy a, a brand new shiv, usually this is the condition of the cable in relationship to the shiv. Again, this is a cross-sectional view. If you see this, this diagram up on top, this is just a small section that we have circled up right here. And this is showing the relationship between the groove and the cable and the very bottom of the casting. Bear in mind, again, this is just a description. This is not every manufacturer has got a situation like this, but generally it holds true that this is a very common configuration. As the cable goes further down in use into the drive shiv, we start seeing it sinking down. Bear in mind also that the cable diameter, the cable wears as well, the outside portion of the cable. And we see a big fluctuation in cable diameters today as well. As it drops down, this would sh clearly show you that the cable is much further down into the groove, almost at the point of bottoming out. A little bit further down, it would be bottoming and probably losing traction. And the question is whether or not this particular shiv is a regroovable shiv or not. And what we want to say is that you have to have sufficient material beneath the bottom of that shiv uh, in relationship to the diameter of the cable. So if we're running half-inch cable, OK, by the time we're finished regrooving, underneath this rope groove seat right here, this material thickness should be a minimum the thickness of the cable by the time we're finished regrooving. OK? So if we're running half-inch cable, when we're finished regrooving, we need at least a half-inch of material in that area. Now, it opens up a lot of questions. We happen to have here a sample. And this particular section of, the, of a drive shiv came in, and we were told to regroove it. If you notice, the two center cables are bottom down, and the two outside cables are not. Now, had all of these cables been the same height, then certainly a regrooving could have been attempted. A very short, stubby groove is not uncommon. Now, in this particular case, this is not a regroovable shiv. It also demonstrates how a shiv is made. If you notice the actual draft or the actual taper. So now, whenever you go and measure a shiv to see if you have enough or sufficient material underneath it, it should be done in different positions all around, probably three different spots on the outside portion of the shiv would be recommended. OK? It could be done very easily with a caliper. It's not a very difficult thing to do. but. Also bear in mind, if there's any cable height difference, if you have, in this case, four cables, and one cable is lower than the other three, then you have to go by that lower cable in order to determine whether or not it's regroovable. Because by the time we're finished, it all has to be the same height. Okay? This is a single wrap traction type application. Very, very common. Probably the most common geared traction machines that are out there. This is a cutaway of a secondary 
Gear Le Shiv, very old one that was sent to a shop, I believe in, uh, I don't think it was Michigan, I think it was, uh, it may have been Indiana, I'm not, I'm not really sure. But this was regrooved in a machine shop. Now, what happened was it fractured in half when it was put into service because the material, little did they realize, the material had such a variance in thickness all around that wheel that after they regrooved it, it looked fine. But when put into service and they, they suspended a load on it, it cracked in half. So we were contracted to make a new replacement shiv, but this was a, a clear-cut example how the material thickness varies from shiv to shiv. This looks like it was either 9 16 or half, half inch cable, and certainly there's certainly not a half inch of material in, in the best areas of this shiv. So bear in mind that even on, on two to one, uh, I'm sorry, even on double wrap applications where the loading is distributed between two shivs, you still have to have sufficient material. And this is just an example, an extreme example of that particular condition. Just a quick word on how, how castings are made. Cast iron uh, today, especially for single wrap traction, is, is made two different ways. Uh, or I should say it's hardened two different ways. We try to get a very uh, a higher Brunel hardness in our shivs today because cable, traction steel cable, is coming into this country much harder than it was previous years. And there has been a, uh, a drop in manufacturing in this country, so we're importing a lot of material. Now, some of the imported material comes in harder than what we usually uh, have used in the past. So whenever a material such as cable comes in harder, that means our, our traction shivs have to be uh, equally as hard. Now, there's a, a fine ratio. The cable should be harder than the traction shiv, but there has to be a, a correlation between the two. Years ago, when they used iron cable, we needed very soft shivs to work with iron cable. But traction steel cable or extra high strain traction steel cable comes up very, very hard sometimes. And the hardness of the shivs have to work so that this way we get good life out of cable and shivs. Now, the way that we harden probably the most traditional way of getting hardness in shivs, okay, is, is casting the part, and then it goes through a, uh, uh, some cycles of heat treating. They'll put it in an oven, raise the temperature, and bring the hardness up. Um, that usually affects the whole shiv throughout the, 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 uh, all of the inside of the shiv. However, the outside portion gets harder than the inside portion. So the deeper you go, the softer the material gets. Okay, that is truth. Um, usually we do Brunel testing on a portion of the shiv to give us a, a range of how hard a shiv is. Now, the other way of producing shivs that are harder, which is a more expensive way of doing it, okay, is alloying the shiv. In the material, we actually put elements to raise the hardness up so that the material is homogeneous. In other words, throughout the whole shiv, whether it's in the center or on the ends, it generally is harder. It still has the same characteristics, that the deeper you go, the softer it gets, but it's not as great as when we just do heat treating with them. So it's important to note that by today's standards, the hardness of shivs are very, very important. Also, the groove configuration of the shivs are very important. Uh, certainly, V grooves do not have the support that a, a U groove shiv has. We're holding much more with much less on a V groove or a V groove or a modified V groove, such as a progressive uh, groove. So it's very, very important to note that um, shivs and shiv hardness and cable hardness uh, are very, very important. And it's a very, very fine line of what you can and cannot do.